What's up everybody, once again my name is Matt and welcome back to New Super Mario Bros. Wii. Today we're playing through another hack. This is Newer Summer Sun. It's another New Super Mario Bros. Wii ROM hack put together by the newer team. This one is two worlds long, and I guess you could say it's like the prequel to the newer holiday special hack that I played like a week and a half ago. Kind of ironic since... As the day of recording this, it's probably the last day of summer for a lot of you guys, and I imagine there are a few who have already gone back to school slash college, so yeah, a little late on this one. Although, to be fair, I did do the holiday special like a week and a half ago, and it didn't make a whole lot of sense either, so this is kind of right up my alley. On the bright side, I did say I wanted to revisit Newer Falling Leaf, and now that summer is over, as long as I don't wait like, you know, four or five months, I can do Falling Leaf in the fall season, and it'll actually make sense! Wow! Everything worked out. See, I planned everything just so I could do Falling Leaf in the fall. Totally didn't just make that up right now on the spot. But, um, yeah, today is August 28th, which, despite being, like, the last day of summer, it's also an important day for me because, guess what, guys? It's my birthday today! So I better see like a million happy birthday comments or I'm deleting my entire channel. Please validate my existence. Thank you very much. Anyways, yeah, we're back to Mario. For some reason, I'm just sort of on a platformer kick. Like it started with Mario, then Sonic Mania came out and I was like, well, I gotta do that too, I guess. Although it was kind of weird since a lot of you guys didn't seem to really enjoy Sonic Mania as much as I did. And I am very curious as to why. I've done like a lot of other Sonic games on the channel in the past, and they've always done about average in terms of like turnout and interaction, but uh, something about Mania, I guess, didn't really jive with you guys out there. I was thinking about playing Sonic Forces when it comes out, but I mean, if it's not something that really interests a lot of you guys, then I guess I'll pass up on it. Sonic Generations, though, was like the fourth or fifth LP that I did. And I remember that one being one of the first projects that uh, I did on this channel that really blew up. That was back when I had like 3k subs or something, so yeah, it was a long time ago. That was also around the same time that I got like my first partnership contract on YouTube, and I just met like a bunch of my YouTube friends that I still hang out with and talk to today. So maybe I'll just play it anyways because uh, I know it's something that I'll enjoy and uh, I want to do it. And I mean, at the end of the day, that's like one of the biggest factors in how I choose the games that I play on this channel. Do I want to play it? There are other factors that help me sort of determine if I want to do a full, longer project, like viewership numbers, but, um, that's really only been an issue for one LP out of, like, what, the 30 or so that I've done so far? I actually have no idea how many LPs I've done. I stopped counting, but I think it was close to 30 games, which, now that I think about it, doesn't even seem like that many. It is a little strange, since uh, earlier on in my YouTube career, if you will, I think I played a lot more games off recording than I did on recording. Nowadays, I spend most of my time playing video games while recording. I do make an exception here and there, but um, that's for games that I know wouldn't really do well on this channel in terms of like interaction or viewership, or games that I just want to sit down and experience for myself. A lot of story-driven games I'll do that with, like um, the last game that I played through on my own was... Uh, I think it was actually Watch Dogs 2, and, you know, despite it not being the best game ever made, I still did enjoy the story. I got to play through at my own pace, too, which was kind of nice. And even before that, I played through another game called uh, Paradigm, which was a really cool, kind of old-school point-and-click adventure game. And uh, I actually forgot, like, how much I enjoy that genre of game. But, um, yeah, those were, like, I think the two most recent games that I played through in their entirety um, off of YouTube. And even then, those were like months and months ago. I'm talking before Breath of the Wild came out. So yeah, it's been some time. Um, besides like multiplayer games like Overwatch that I play with my friends pretty frequently, I don't really play a whole lot of games that aren't for YouTube anymore. And it is kind of weird, because gaming is still, like, one of my biggest hobbies, and I don't think I like gaming any less than I did, you know, back then. It's just that, um, 
you know, now that I'm doing this whole YouTube thing, I guess, the frequency of games that I play and types of games that I play has sort of changed a little bit, which I don't think is necessarily a bad thing. But, uh, sometimes I do miss just, like, sitting down and playing a different style of game that I wouldn't normally play on this channel. But also, at the same time, I don't think a lot of those types of games have come out recently. Um, not gonna lie, there's really not a whole lot of games that I've been looking forward to playing, which is kinda sad, since, like, a few years ago, there were a lot of games that I was looking forward to playing. Um, I will say this, though, I have been thinking about getting a PS4 just because um, I want to play through like the Uncharted games. Those were games that I never got to play because I've never actually owned a Sony console. The only Sony system that I ever owned was a PSP, so I've missed out on a lot of pretty good exclusives on, you know, the PS3 and the PS4. The only problem is like, the PS4 is pretty dang expensive, and uh, it's hard for me to justify that purchase if I'm not gonna, like, make videos with it, you know? But I have been thinking about buying a broken PS4 and, like, fixing it myself, because there's a couple different types of uh, errors or things that go wrong with the PS4 that are pretty easy to fix, and um, that is, like, another one of my hobbies is you know, electronics and repairing electronics. I sort of showed that off a little bit with the uh, SNES repair video that I did a couple months ago. But um, yeah, I taught myself how to like solder a year and a half ago and then I've just been learning more and more about electronics and how to repair circuitry and uh, read like pinouts and um, data sheets and stuff like that. That way you can sort of figure out how the different circuits work and repair them if they break. It's actually a lot of fun, although it can be very time consuming if uh, you're sort of like a novice or beginner like myself. Like recently, just because I wanted to, I had an extra Wii sensor bar and I was like, hey, you know what would be kind of cool? If I made this powered by USB instead of like the proprietary connector that plugs in the back of the Wii or the Wii U. So I spent like two days uh, modifying it to power off of USB. And it only took two days because I was stupid and didn't really look at, um, you know, the voltages and power draw of the LEDs inside the sensor bar. And then I also didn't realize they were sort of wired up in parallel, I think. So I would like fix that because I took out some of the LEDs uh, to lower the amount of power that they would draw. That way it could actually be run off of a USB port without like any problems whatsoever. And then, um, I actually, like, burnt out the PCB in some of the pads that, like, the LEDs were soldered to because I kept my iron, uh, on the pad for too long and it actually, like, burnt part of the PCB. So, like, repairing or modifying electronics can be kind of tricky if you don't exactly know what you're doing. And, uh, if you do mess up a PCB and don't know how to fix it, then you can kind of, like, ruin... A perfectly good electronic. Thankfully, I was able to, uh, you know, run some jumper wires and fix everything, and now I have a USB-powered sensor bar, so that's kind of cool. But, um, yeah, the PS4s that I'm looking at sort of repairing are ones with broken HDMI ports, because it's actually a pretty easy fix. Like, an HDMI port is... I'm not exactly sure how many pins it is. I think it's 20. The only difficult thing about that repair would be that, um, the pins are so tiny that soldering them can be somewhat difficult. Like, when you solder pins that are that tiny and close together, the biggest thing you need to be careful of is, um, the two pins getting connected and causing a short in the electronic, and then that could fry something even worse. So, that's what you need to be careful of, but... Other than that, it's a pretty basic repair. I probably would have to buy a heat gun, because, um, when you desolder a component like that from a PCB, doing it with a soldering iron is, uh, pretty dangerous. I also have no idea, like, why I'm even talking about this during a Mario, uh, freaking video, because I guarantee you, like, only five of you guys have any idea of what I'm talking about right now. But, again, it's one of my hobbies, so... It's something that I could talk about for a very, very long time, even though no one really cares. <laughs> but I'm sure everyone has, like, a hobby like that. 
Um, and the reason why I like electronics so much is just because whenever you build something that works or you fix something, you get like that instant gratification of like, yeah, I did this and it feels really good. It's the same reason why I enjoy editing so much because it's kind of the same thing. Like you can make an edit or, you know, finish a video and be like, yeah, you know, I did this. It turns out really good and like you're super proud of it. So I guess that's just like my personality and uh because those things are sort of similar i enjoy doing them for those reasons um i really have no idea what it is about mario that just like makes me go off on tangents like that but uh yeah we're already on the mid castle so that's pretty cool um as i said earlier i think this entire hack is only two worlds long so probably only going to be a world one world two thing then Maybe we'll move on to something else. I might actually continue doing um, more of these Mario Wii hacks because a lot of you guys really enjoyed Holiday Special and said you wanted to see more of them. And I really like Mario Wii as like a game engine. So the more time I can spend playing it, the better, honestly. But I have been getting a lot of requests for new Super Mario Bros. 2 and new Super Mario Bros. Wii. So maybe at some point... I'll, uh, oh no, why did I fall down here? This is awful. Maybe at some point I will get to those. I hate these freaking, uh, green bouncy blocks, by the way. They are the most annoying and inconsistent thing in the world, bro. <laughs> like, you have to press A at the right timing, but even then, sometimes it just will not bounce you up for whatever reason. Alright, Mario, come on. You gotta work with me here, dude. I'm having a hard enough time as it is. You can't be freaking... Missing jumps on me, dude. Can I please? Thank you. Jeez. All right. Are we done with this level? I think we are. We are. Thank goodness, man. I knew it was going to be something stupid that was going to, like, trip me up. And, of course, it would be those uh, freaking green blocks. All right. And, yeah, sadly, uh, just like with the newer holiday special, they did not remix any of the boss fights in this hack, which is kind of sad. So, we're just going to be fighting the normal Koopaling battles, but, you know, whatever, no big deal. Again, this was just meant to be, like, sort of a short hack, so I can understand why they wouldn't spend the extra time to remix the boss fights. But, um, I do actually want to do newer Super Mario Bros. Wii, because those remix boss fights are really stinking cool, and I think a lot of you guys will enjoy them, like, over the Koopalings. Anyways, um, I guess we're done with the mid-castle, so only a few more levels left, and then we'll make our way towards the actual castle, which is actually really cool in this hack. Um, like I said, the newer team is really, really good at designing levels. I really do have a lot of respect for the newer team, because they've been able to, like, make so many levels that are so good just in this game because they've done two full entire mods of this game like another new super mario bros wii and then newer super mario bros wii which are full on uh, nine world mods of the game so that's like what 72 levels each then they did um falling leaf and holiday special which are eight levels each then they did um this which i think is 16 levels because it's uh, two worlds, so that's like, what, 176 levels or something like that that they made in just this game. And then they're working on, like, uh, newer Super Mario Bros. DS, newer Super Mario Bros. U, and I think they're also working on newer Super Mario Bros. 2. As far as I know, none of those have been released yet, but, um... Yeah, they're working on a lot of stuff, and I cannot believe just, like, how many levels they've been able to make and how good they actually have all been, because you would imagine at some point, like, they'd make a level that's just not that good. And, I mean, from what I've played, all their levels are pretty high quality, like, as good as any Nintendo-made level is, at least. And it makes me kind of wonder what would ever happen if... Nintendo took a page out of Sega's book and just hired, like, a bunch of fans to, uh, create a Mario game, like, a 2D Mario game. What would actually happen? Because, 
I mean, now we do have sort of something to point to, like a precedent has been set, so to speak. You know, Sega hired a bunch of die-hard Sonic fans who are creating, you know, Sonic fan games uh, or Sonic ROM hacks to make Sonic Mania, and look what happened. They made the best classic Sonic game ever. I mean, I know it's been, what, 15 or 20 some odd years since the last true classic Sonic game, but even then, Mania blows those out of the water, like Sonic 1 through 3, Sonic and Knuckles, Sonic CD, they're great, but, uh, Mania is just better, so, I don't know what to say, like, it's kind of funny to me that, you know, fans created a better Sonic game than the Sonic team could, <laughs> which, I mean, no insult to Sega. I'm sure they've tried their hardest, and props to them for actually listening to the community and then hiring other community members to help make the game. They certainly did the right thing there, and it shows. And I wonder what would happen if Nintendo did something similar. Like, I don't think Nintendo would ever do that just because... Nintendo's kind of like a proud Japanese company, and I feel like them doing that would be completely against the culture of Nintendo itself, so... I don't think they would ever do that, at least in my lifetime, but, uh... You can't help but wonder what would happen. And don't get me wrong, there's definitely some talented people out there, too. I mean... Super Mario World Central has been around for ages, like, I remember back in the day... Like, frequenting that form and just, like, playing ROM hack after ROM hack because, um, like, back before I started my YouTube channel, some of the videos that I liked to watch the most were, like, videos from SSOHPKC or Proton John, and they would just play, you know, Mario World ROM hack. So I would go and, like, download these hacks and play them myself, and they were a lot of fun. And then, of course, you have people nowadays, like the newer team, who are just, you know, pumping out amazing levels in like hacks for these newer series of games and it's really cool to see how this genre of ROM hack has sort of stayed alive and evolved over the years and not only that like the talent behind them has just gotten so much better which is good for all of us because that means more content to play and that's totally awesome um I think there is a power up up here yeah hello there fire flower I would very much like to pick you up. You know what? Get out of here, you freaking blue shell turtle. Not even the cool blue shell like in Mario Kart, man. So, I don't want anything to do with you. Um, alright, this is actually gonna be kind of hard to get because, of course, I gotta bounce off these freaking green blocks and I hate these stupid things. Um, alright, I am spending far too much time trying to get that fire flower, so screw it, I could probably get one somewhere else in the level. I don't even care anymore. <laughs> I'm just that salty about not being able to jump up there. Like I said, guys, I freaking hate those dumb green blocks. Um, next star coin I think is down here. A lot of the star coins in, like, these later levels are kinda hidden, I wanna say. Although I probably shouldn't say that since, uh, now that I think about it, uh, a couple of the levels actually do have them out in the open, so... While some of them are hidden, uh, some of them are also out in the open, and how did that second frog, like, fall off these spinning platforms? I didn't even know that was possible. Also, I'm a little pissed that, uh, I'm baby Mario now, but whatever, what are you gonna do? We're done with this level. That's really all I care about, man. <laughs> I can deal with being baby Mario. I'm sure we'll find a power-up in the next level, so not a huge deal. Um, oh, I did it again, guys. I literally went to 1-6 before I went to 1-5. I swear I didn't do that on purpose. That's just gonna be, like, a thing that I do. Alright, there we go. Now we're back to normal Super Mario size. Let's jump into 1-5. We're actually almost done with this world. I don't know what happened. Like, I got distracted, and, uh, I didn't realize I was that close to being done. Hey, a penguin suit! Not really sure how useful this is gonna be in the world themed around summer. Like, what am I supposed to do with a freaking ice power-up? Hello? I feel like someone missed the memo here. Um, alright, first star coin, this one's a little bit tricky. What you wanna do here is 
wait for this platform to uh, tilt over and then jump at the very last second. That way you don't like fall off and die. Now let's just wait for it to tilt back down and we're good to go, baby. I like how they sort of um made the sand things into water, but like the particles are still brown sand color. I guess they couldn't like edit those. It's kind of funny. So, I actually do have a question for you guys. Um, now that sort of summer has started, um, a lot of my videos as of recently have been, you know, like, 20 to 30 minutes long. Now that summer has started and a lot of you guys are probably back in school or college, I'm curious if, um, you really do still like the longer videos because, um, I imagine there is less free time overall, so I might try to like make the videos a little bit shorter if that's the case. I don't know, because on one hand, I like making longer videos, uh, it works with the YouTube algorithm, but also at the same time, if it's gonna come at the cost of like some viewership, I'd probably just prefer to make uh, slightly shorter videos just so more people actually have the time to watch them through. So. Let me know if you guys, like, still want me to do longer 25, 30 minute videos, or, oh, why'd you have to turn around, dude, come on. All right, well, good thing is we were right at the end of the level. But, uh, yeah, so let me know if you want to still do, like, longer 20 to 30 minute videos, or if you'd prefer, like, 15 to 20 minute videos in the future, and I'll see what I can do to make that happen. Um, keep in mind, though, if we do shorter videos, it means we'll have, like, more videos in any particular series overall. Alright, um, I guess it's time for us to move on to the castle of World 1. So, at this point, as soon as we finish this level, we'll be halfway done with this ROM hack. That's pretty cool, right? And oh man, wait. Hang on. What's this music from? Is it from Mario Kart? I feel like this is definitely something from Mario Kart. Is it the... Luigi's Mansion theme from Mario Kart DS? I don't know, but that's really gonna bug me. It's definitely from another Mario game, I know that much. Well, obviously. I mean, that was like <laughs> the most obvious statement I could have said, but I don't know which Mario game it's from. I don't even know if it's Luigi's Mansion. I'll be honest, like I've played Luigi's Mansion uh, like the actual game one time and then I played Dark Moon also one time. I never actually finished it. Like my cart for Luigi's Mansion, uh, Dark Moon, it's broken. I don't know how it happened, but it, it's literally just broken. Um, the plastic shell came apart and I'm afraid to ever use it because I feel like the, uh, chip with the actual game data on it is just gonna like move around once I insert it into my 3DS and it's gonna mess something up. So. Haven't beat it for that reason, but uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure this is from uh, Mario Kart DS, which does make sense, because like, they used another Mario Kart DS track in newer Holiday Special, so I guess the newer team just like really likes Mario Kart DS remixes, which, I mean, I'll hand it to them, it doesn't sound bad, although, I don't know if it really fits as a castle theme kind of has like that spooky aesthetic and ghostly vibe to it which I'm not really sure works here but then again we do have these uh, skeletal fish so maybe that's the ghostly aesthetic that we were needing so maybe it does work I mean it's not like the worst song in the world they could have picked worse tunes from Mario Kart DS but whatever man whatever all right um where is this last star card? Ooh, that was pretty close. And there it is. Oh, thank goodness we threw out that fireball. We got stunned, but we made it work, baby. Let's go. We got all three star coins. Now, we just have to survive to the freaking end. And thank goodness we actually already killed the freaking fish. So I think we're pretty much safe as long as I don't do anything stupid between, like, here and the boss door, which... Yeah, the boss door is right there. So... We're good to go, but before we head in there, there is a little bit of a secret that I'd like to show off. It's nothing too important, but uh, yeah, if you head back here, you got one of those, uh, I guess, power-up blocks. Even though we got a 1-up from it, 
Not really all that useful, but we still have our fire flower, so it's probably all we're gonna need for this boss fight anyways. Let's get to it, man. That way we can finish up world one. I like all these cracks in the castle and how we can sort of like see uh, the beach background. And whoa, Kamek. You're looking kind of sick there, buddy. You sure you're feeling well? I don't know if you should be using your magic right now. Bad stuff might happen. Actually, it's just going to be the normal stuff that we all come to expect from Kamek. Nothing too special. Ooh, that was kind of close. Good thing we got that clutch wall jump and you're dead, son. This is like one of the easiest battles in New Super Mario Bros. Wii just because um, of how these platforms just like trap them in those small areas. I mean, don't get me wrong, all the boss battles are easy, but uh, this one in particular really takes no skill whatsoever. But there we go, guys. We've done it. We got the key, and we're done with World 1. And aw, Peach is a redhead. Look at her up there. She's adorable. Yeah, that's right. Run away, Bowser Jr., just like you always do. And with that, I think we are done with World 1. We've got all the star coins, so I guess we'll just move directly on to World 2. But, um, I think that's going to do it for this video. So, if you guys enjoyed this part, a like rating would be greatly appreciated. If you want to see more of my videos, consider subscribing. But once again, guys, my name is Matt. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.